Ow. Hi, I'm a news person, and here is some news. Stephen Colbert kind of sucks now. Wow. Pretty incendiary up top, me. Let's back up. Stephen Colbert, creator of a nine-year masterpiece, was recently a guest on Jimmy Kimmel's Late Night Show, and they discussed Kimmel's also recent interview of former press secretary Sean Spicer. Kimmel said he kind of felt sorry for Spicer, to which Colbert goodly replied, well, he wasn't apologizing. He wants to be forgiven, but he won't regret anything he did. You've got to regret to be forgiven. Do we have a clip? Yes, but I already said it and we showed it on screen, so we don't need to do the clip, okay. Well, Colbert is right about this. Sean Spicer regularly lied to the country for his liar boss and called protesters paid protesters, and for weeks said he'd make sure to ask if the president believes in climate change, but never did. He thinks it's a hoax on Twitter, but real for his resorts. Yet, after all of that, when Sean Spicer met the Pope, a tweet went twiral, saying, wanna know why liberals are decent people? We're all pretty happy that Sean Spicer got to meet the Pope. Or maybe it's because liberals think the news is a TV show and Sean Spicer is a dopey but likable goon side character who lies for the bad president but secretly doesn't like it. And then he resigns because of his principles. And he tells the country he's sorry and he speaks out against the bad president. And then the series finale rolls around and hey, Sean Spicer finally got to meet the Pope. Good for him. I feel pretty happy that Sean Spicer got to meet the Pope. Because it's easy to think of the news and these people in the context of a TV show. The flow of breaking stories never stops, so it's easy to binge. There are some bizarre characters, and some of them are wiretapped. And every action seems very drastic and dire. And the star of it is an image-obsessed reality TV host who creates false dramatic tension by saying there are two contenders for a Supreme Court nomination when there's only one, and tweets about his meetings with foreign leaders about the possibility of nuclear war by saying, stay tuned. A character named Sean Spicer gets spicy when he lies or is asked questions, and his job is to be asked questions and not lie. As the communications director, he tweeted his Twitter password twice. A character who peddles alternative facts is named Conway. What are you, lost? Christian Shepherd. It seems like a show. We made a whole show about it, but it's not. It's reality, and in reality, we haven't been shown the season where Sean Spicer redeems himself and shows regret, so he shouldn't receive forgiveness. Kimmel, wow, we're really still talking about this, huh? In his interview, Kimmel said, what if Spicer privately shows regret, but doesn't want to make Trump angry? Colbert's response, again, was responded quite goodly. What if he's privately regretting it, but too scared to publicly regret it because there's a big orange bully that might hit him over the head? <laughs> <laughs> then we privately forgive him. Kimmel's comment makes me think that Spicer does regret it. Privately. Probably to Jimmy. But Stephen's right. In that case, keep it private. He hasn't publicly acknowledged his regrets about his actions against the public, so don't invite him to the Emmys to joke about how he lied to everybody. At a show hosted by Stephen Colbert, whose idea it was to invite him. Which I guess raises the question, can satire save the Republic? F***ing no. It can give an award to a guy for doing an unpracticed, utterly mediocre impression of a president they hate, and get that president to tweet about the Emmy's low ratings, so... Way to go. Hashtag resistance. Like, Stephen, respectfully, are you f***ing kidding me, man? Did Sean Spicer show you private regret, but did you respond with public forgiveness? Are the answers to those questions obvious? Will I stop this? How about now? Not yet? Ever? Now. This isn't the show, Stephen. We didn't all see whatever scene made you think this would be okay. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Everything is better on TV. Yeah, great. TV's great. Great job. Join the club, I guess, of white millionaires who are quick to forgive these liars because their lies don't personally affect them. But you're doing great, man. That club fucking sucks. Speaking of healthcare policy affecting people's lives and families, so maybe wanting people to not get political about healthcare is f***ing stupid, there's a new demon spawn GOP healthcare bill that's somehow even worse than the last one, the one before that, and the other 96 bills. Which brings us to our new segment, We've Got 99 Problems, and a bill is all of them. The current bill is worse and also the same in that it would increase premiums, kick millions off their insurance, wouldn't cover these things, the president promoted it like a TV show and lied about it because he doesn't understand or care enough, every single health organization says the bill is terrible, people's lives and health are at risk, everyone needs to call these senators to urge them to switch their vote from being a bad person to being the bare minimum of a good person, and you know the drill, we've seen this one before. Reruns, am I right? 
I wonder if we'll have the exciting down-to-the-wire decision like when original cast member John McCain was asked how he was going to vote on a bill that decided the fates of millions of stressed out real Americans worried about their health care, and he said, quote, wait for the show, like it's a show. Even before that, Democratic Senator of Connecticut Chris Murphy tweeted, I ran into John McCain as we walked underground to the Senate for the final vote. Someday, I'll get to tell my grandkids what he said to me. Hmm, sounds important, Chris. Maybe keep it to yourself or don't tease it like a show. That night, Chris Hayes tweeted, There's something weird about how casual it all is on the floor when so much hangs in the balance. Ostensibly describing out-of-touch wealthy people in power disconnected from the weight of their actions casually milling about during the intermission of political theater. Where have I seen that before? Recently. Anyway, call these senators to tell them to vote no on the bill, and also call Chris Murphy to ask him what John McCain said to him in that cool underground scene from the mid-season cliffhanger of this terrible show. Here's some news. Another police officer was acquitted after using an easy-to-use tool for instantly killing people to shoot and kill a black man, and etc. and so forth. You know the drill. And like, I didn't even realize this show was still on. It's easy to get distracted by the Trump show. Though honestly, this show kind of jumped the shark when cops were primarily used and developed as slave patrols. Or maybe Police Academy 5? Or 3? I don't know, I haven't seen any of them. But protests erupted in St. Louis after the officer's acquittal, and before you can say, that went well, to uproarious canned laughter, it did not go well. And this is the part where we show you the police trampling this old lady. Cool. Okay. Cool. After arresting protesters for, after watching that clip, oh my god, who knows, the police tweeted the names of the people arrested and also their home addresses, which some would call doxing, but others would call being just f***ing awful. Many people pointed this out to them, and they said it was required and lawful due to the Sunshine Law, a transparency policy in Missouri. I wonder how long it would take to Google the Sunshine Law, click on a PDF of it, hit Control F, and search for words like arrest and incident report to find a passage that explicitly says, quote, other information, such as phone numbers and addresses, is not subject to disclosure. Because, of course, it's f***ing not, you f***ing cops. I also wonder if it would take as long to do as it did to describe. It did not. Yes, the St. Louis police seemed more socially active than they were during, say, the Ferguson season of this show, as they tried to frame protesters as violent and themselves as exercising restraint. Here's a cop holding two spray bottles claiming, Officers confiscate bottles with unknown chemicals used to against police tonight in downtown hashtag STL. Thank you for the tweet. Heroes. But I hope we don't zoom in. No, don't zoom in. Oh no, don't do it. Don't zoom in. Oh no, you've zoomed in to see one bottle is labeled apple cider, which helps alleviate pain from getting pepper sprayed by cops. Crack the, uh, case. Cop terms. Speaking of crack, the war on drugs is a failure. Speaking of wars on things and failure, this week marked the 16th anniversary of the first official use of the phrase war on terror, which, oh no, that's not good. The war, which has so far cost trillions of dollars and millions of lives and destroyed many countries and created ISIS and increased terrorism by <laughs> and uh, happy anniversary. Maybe in this episode, they'll get divorced so they can renew their vows. Like maybe Congress will vote down Rand Paul's attempt to end perpetual war. Ah, romance. And since the gift for 16th anniversaries is money, Congress also approved an increase in the military budget that's even more than President Trump asked for, which was already a lot considering our yearly military spending was already more than all of these other countries combined. The increase, which very few senators voted against, would increase the military budget by $80 billion. Answering the question, you want single payer health care? Where do you propose we get any money for anything? With frustrated, sad laughter. But sure, $80 billion seems like a lot. But like Bernie Sanders' wacky proposal for free college for all Americans would cost <coughs> But cleaning Flint, Michigan's literally poisoned water would cost <coughs> So. Well, you know, hey, it, it, it's our anniversary. It's important to show war that Congress appreciates it. After all, it's given us. Like this war criminal dancing on a show hosted by a woman he fought to deny the rights of. Or be part of increasingly common sentences like, Trump's so bad, I miss George W. Bush war criminal. So, looking forward to the no public regret followed by public forgiveness tour of Donald Trump and Mike Pence in 10 years when our new president is a pile of slugs. That's our show. 
Oh, also, here's some news. Bush did not. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video. If you want to subscribe to our channel, click the big C in the middle. And if you want notifications on when we get new videos, click the bell icon. And if you want to find out what melts steel beams, it's not jet fuel, it's George W. 